Okay, so now we go with the last talk of today from Daniel Hernandez Rui Perez from the University of Salamanca. And he will talk about uh, Susie Nori motives. Thank you, Daniel. So I guess I have to switch to the next slide, right? Well, uh, for, for the time being, it's okay. Thank you very much to, to all of you, to Valerio, for, Hugo, for inviting me to this wonderful workshop in honor of Claudio Bartocci's uh, 16th birthday. Uh, we, we have been friends for many, many, many years. We have collaborated. We have co be, had a, a lot of uh, things in common have discussed about books, about music, about philosophy, about mathematics, about the things of life. So it has been a very fruitful and, uh, and a lot of fun during all these years. Also, also with Hugo, we have collaborated in, in many joint projects, the three of us. Hugo reported uh, on that uh, in, his, in his talk. So the title of, I am going just to, to give a perhaps quite technical, quite technical talk about uh, the last project we are involved with Hugo and, and Manning, which is about Sushi Nori motives. After the introduction of motives by Grotten this many, many years ago was a kind of representation of schemes or algebraic varieties into a Navillian category in a sort that this was universal for all cohomological theories. Many attempts have been made to, to construct such a motif theory and also derivations. Uh, we have also uh, uh, developed a theory of motifs in which the representation was taken in a triangulated category which could take the place of the derived category of the Abelian category in what we originally wanted the motives to, to take values. So if you want to move to the next slip, this is the plan, just a, a few words about what algebraic supergeometry is. And then we are, the plan is to describe the mathematical ingredients of a theory of uh, sushi in uh, You have to have uh, super cycles. You need super cycles in order to define a, a stable, a stable super maps because to define a super map, you need to fix a, a cycle, homological cycle in the target variety of the other maps. So you need to, to do that. You need a theory of super cycle, then you need to to define what the stable supercurves and supermass are, and, and then to give an idea of what uh, Sushi Nori motives could be. So I think you have to the, the full screen view. Don't know why. Mm, sorry. Not under, uh, is it okay now? Yeah, it's okay now. Is so, it? as you, many of you know, supergeometry is uh, nowadays a very old topic and was created to deal with problems coming for supersymmetry super using methods of algebra geometry. Hugo reported on, on that in, in his talk. Um, then uh, the supergeometry, piece go ahead, Hugo. I think it's, it's better if you go, you go ahead until the, all the slides, okay. It's, it's okay. So the super, super geometry uh, gives the geometrical framework where anti-commutative and commutative fermionic and uh, bosonic variables could live together. So super geometry studies then super manifolds or super varieties. There were various first approaches, first in latest constant, David Rogers, uh, who also reported on that. Uh, um, in my opinion, after constant and Manning, the, the first approach versus related constant uh, approach prevailed. Moreover, the definition can be given not only for a differentiable supermanifold, but also for holomorphic uh, varieties or for algebra varieties in Grotten language schemes. Uh, 
So algebraic supergeometry um, is that, is the, the geometry of super schemes. This has, uh, in the development of algebraic supergeometry, there has been uh, applications and the first application of algebraic supergeometry was the study of supersymmetric curves, which are super curves, which are conformal superstructure, also the moduli properties, construction of the moduli spaces, or other properties. Um, further developments, now quite recent developments, are required to extend in fundamental algebraic geometry to the super setting. It means all kind of construction, cohomology, coherent shifts, uh, uh, semi-continuity theorems, uh, existence of Hilbert and Picard super skin, and so, so on and so forth. I will leave you in the next slide um, a reference for, for that. And there has been contribution by many people, some of this in, in, the, in the audience. So go ahead, please, Hugo. Yeah, that's it. So the super version of the classical Grotten is fundamental geometry algebraic. It consists of, uh, as I said before, the cohomology of currencies, finiteness theorems, semi-continuity uh, properties, super vector and super projective bundles, Hilbert and Perkins super skin, Grotten is relative duality, and so on and so forth. And there is a reference, which is a paper on that, a preprint on that, uh, Britain, joint work with uh, with Hugo and with Alexander Polischuk is called Notes of Fundamental Algebra Supergeometry and is uh, and is in the archive. It's a very long paper, quite I don't remember, but kind of 80 pages. So go ahead. Continue with, with supergeometry. There are known results uh, on supergeometry and the introduction of the superanalogous of the moduli spaces of stable curves. There could be moduli spaces of super stable curves. We have many old papers that, uh, that the Lynch related to Manning, uh, are quite recent paper of Felder, Kazan and Polishchuk, the moduli space of stable super curves, and also a paper written by Hugo and, and me about the supermoduli of super curves with Ramon Panthers. All those geometric results suggest that uh, uh, superanalogous of motifs uh, also can and should be developed in the words of money. Then a category of sushi motifs should contain at least motifs of moduli spaces or moduli stacks of supersymmetric curves. So the construction of these sushi motifs at the end of the story will be related with graphs associated with the stable supermaps which should be a generalization of supersymmetric graphs. This has been recently studied by Kessler, Manin, and Bu. There is a quite recent preprint on that, though we don't quite follow this approach, but other more geometrical. Please, Hugo. So starting from the very beginning, just to set up some notation, we, we start by saying, in order to define supercycles, we need to define sub lengths of uh, super rings of length uh, of uh, finite length. This is the art in super ring. So an art in super ring is just a super ring with the property that every uh, descending chains of super ideal is stationary. And it happens that a super ring is artinian if and only if when you quote in tau by the uh, ideal generated by the youth element, you obtain an ordinary commutative art in ring. So we have the definition of composition series in a graded module over a super ring. That is change where the quotients are simple A modules, that they have no submodules, but could be even or could be odd. That's the difference with the, with the ordinary non-super case. Please go ahead. So, as in the ordinary case, a uh, graded module is said to be of finite length. It has a finite composition series, and the super length of a C2 graded A module is a pair. It's not longer an integral number, but a pair of integral numbers in, in which the two components of the pairs are the number of even quotients and the second is the number of uh, odd successive, successive quotients. 
you can one can prove that these two numbers are independent of the choice of a composition series of the module. So we have a definition of the length of a, of a module, of a module, um, and it's not longer an integral number, but that it is now a pair of integral numbers. Go ahead. Now we have a super domain of even dimension one, which is the corresponding of, of uh, uh, the local ring of a super curve. And then um, you, you can define the order of an even element. And the order is the length of the quotient of the uh, super domain module, the ideal generated by the element. Again, this order is a pair of integral numbers. And with the product you can imagine in, in C2, you can prove that the order uh, transform products into sums. This allows you to define the order of not only of an element of the superdomain, but the order of an even rational superfunction, uh, uh, an element of the uh, ring, uh, division ring associated to the superdomains. And this normally is defined as, as in the ordinary case, you write the rational superfunction as the quotient of two elements of the ring, and then the order is the, 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 the difference between the orders of the numerators and denominators. You can prove using the property, the, the multiplicative property, that it is well-defined. And it is also multiplicative, that is transform the product into the sum. Go ahead. Now, cycles. Take a super scheme of even dimension M. Then if H is an integral number in H super cycle, it's a finite sum, it's a formal finite sum, uh, where you have uh, subvarieties, ordinary subvarieties of the underlying scheme, subvarieties of dimension H, and you put coefficients, coefficients, but are now couples of integral numbers instead of integral numbers. So is the free set C2 graded module generated by the ordinary subvarieties. That's it. So if you take the direct sum, you get a big graded C2 module, which is the module of super cycles of a super scheme. Of course, a lot of information is missing, but this, uh, this also happened for uh, ordinary scheme, not super. When you take the, the cycles of a scheme, you lose a lot of information. You just put the, the free group generated by the sub varieties and you lose uh, a lot of nilpotent information. So here is the same, is the same, but the difference is that the coefficient are no longer integral numbers, but pairs of integral numbers. Go ahead. So th this allows you to define the super cycle associated to a closed su su super scheme. And this is an important part of the, of the, of the theory of non-issue motifs. Then you take a closed su super scheme of pure dimension H. You take the irreducible components of the bosonic part of the super scheme. You take the local ring at the generic points of any of those components, and you define the supercycles as in the formula. So the supercycle has as component the, the classes of the irreducible components with a coefficient, which is the length of this local ring, which happen to be an Artinian ring. Again, this is a pair of integral numbers, a pair of integral numbers and not a number. Now you can define the image in X of the, the super cycle is just pulling back by the cycles to go into the cycles of the super scheme to the cycles of the super scheme. When the super scheme happened to be a sub super variety, it means what this is, uh, sorry, Hugo, when it, it is irreducible, the ordinary uh, underlying scheme is irreducible, the bosonic part, then uh, this, the the supercycle associated takes this particularly easy form. Oh. 
Then properties. This, this definition is tailored so that you have all the properties that uh, functorial properties that have the ordinary cycles, meaning they're compatible with fast pullbacks and with uh, push forwards, proper forwards. So whenever we have a flat morphism or super scheme, an asus variety, you take the pullback. This is a close so super scheme of dimension, the sum of the dimension of the sub variety and of the relative dimension of the morphism. And then you can define, as it is written there, as a, a, the pullback supercycle, which is the supercycle associated to the, to the pullback. This is tend to amorphism between supercycles. When you have a close to super scheme, then the pullback is exactly the class of the ordinary pullback of the sub variety. Go ahead. And this is functorial in the sense that it's compatible with compositions. That's the property. You need the morphism to be flat for that, also in the ordinary case. Please, Hugo. Then we have a, we can define the supercycle associated to a rational superfunction. We know that whenever we have a super variety of even dimension S, H plus one, Whenever you have a one codimension sub variety, you have still that the local super ring at the generic point is a super domain only the dimension one because the codimension is one. So we have an associated order function. Then when, when we have a rational even super function, we can define the super cycle associated to not to F but to G to the, to the rational super function. And it's written like that, the sum run overall one codimensional sub varieties. And the formula makes sense because uh, 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 the order is different from zero only for a finite number of uh, one codimensional sub variety. This is exactly the same as in the ordinary case, but now we are dealing with super uh, rational function and with super cycles. Go. And then taking this into account, we can define uh, a rational equivalence. We say that a super cycle is rationally equivalent to zero. It is, it is a sum this way of uh, divisors of functions. It's the same as in the in the other case. And then we can mod out rational equivalence to get an other module, which is the module of cycle, super cycles, modulo rational equivalence, as in the ordinary case. Go ahead, you go. Now, whenever we have a proper morphism of a scheme, for every subvariety of the first uh, scheme, the scheme theoretic image is a subvariety of the target or the bosonic part of the target. Also, there is an extension between the corresponding fields of algebraic function. This is classic, it's not super here, which is finite when both have the same dimension. Then we define the degree of the morphism at the degree of seed over at seed at zero. If they are not, they don't have the same dimension, it's some contraction, or the dimension of one field over the other when the two varieties have the same dimension. Using this, you can define the push forward of a super cycle using this formula. You take the ordinary image, take the associated place, and affect that with the degree of the variety. And this extends to a morphism called the push forward between the cycles of codimension H of X and the cycles H of, of Y. So now we have a definition of proper push forward. Okay. And what is important, this is that theorem which has motivated all the formal definitions is that the proper super forward is compatible with um, rational equivalence. So the proper push forward induces a morphism between the cycles, between the equivalent, the rational equivalence classes of cycles of the first and on the second manifold. Again, then some basic on Grotendi duality. Whenever you have a proper morphism of super skin, there is a theory of Grotendi duality. You can write uh, in this formula 
in the driver's category, meaning more or less that there is this uh, F admiration phantom, which is kind of a uh, um, right adjoint of the derived uh, direct image pushed forward. So in particular, you have an object, which is the, the complex associated with the structure shift of epsilon, and this is called the dualizing complex. Then we can define this is a comma polymorphism of super schemes. It's a morphism in which the dualizing complex reduces to a sieve, which is sifted by the dimension, uh, the relative dimension of the morphisms. Of course, in the ordinary case, this is equivalent to uh, the morphism being comma coli in the in the algebraic uh, sense. So this allows us to define, go ahead, Hugo. If you don't want to. Uh, yeah, the, the yeah when, when, when the morphism is smooth, uh, then it is comma coli and the relative dualizing shift is the Borosinian of the relative differential. It was proved by Penkov many years ago. So it's kind of, in the ordinary case, is the, the uh, exterior algebra of the differential, here is the Bersinian. Now, what are supercurves? Supercurves is a reduced super scheme of even dimension one and pure of dimension one. This means that the, the one can prove that then the, the uh, super ring or the supercurves splits as direct sum of the ring or the bosonic part plus a sieve, which is not a line bundle because we are not uh, assuming that the supercurve is smooth, but is still a sieve uh, of pure dimension one in the terminology of, of Simpson. Split. It's, 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 it's You're not, not assuming split. that it's split. I not, it's no, I'm smooth. not assuming it's not a split because in, in, uh, in all the theory, when you said that a super scheme is split, you are assuming that the, the L is a line bundle. Yes, yes, no, you said smooth. Split. Okay, no, no, don't worry. No, it's, it's, a question, it's a question of just a mere question of terminology. When a super scheme is said to be smooth, then should be the exterior algebra of a line of a vector bundle. Of a vector bundle. So this don't happen here. This is the exterior algebra of one sieve which is not a line bundle. And then in that sense, it's not a split. We can call this a split if you want. Okay. So, like it is look like. Okay. So, and then a relative supercurve is a flat morphism of super scheme whose fibers are supercurves. Hugo. Then, when we have a proper smooth supercurve and a positive relative super divisor, we can define, uh, define what a Ramon Ramon Potter's at Sita is. And then the, the existence of a super conformal structure, which is a, a, a subsieve of the tangent of the relative tangencies with punctures at theta, is you can be defined this as that as the existence of a sieve epimorphism, typically one gives you give the, the, the dual definition, but an, an a sieve epimorphism, such that this composition gives an equivalence. This is equivalent to a uh, completely non-integrable distribution such that the, the square is equal to, to the quotient twisted by minus set, which is the ordinary definition. This is completely equivalent. It's another uh, way to say the same thing in the smooth case. But if you write this in, in this way, you would have a definition in this way, you can generalize this quite easily to the case of proper non-smooth supercurve, but only called Macaulay supercurves, which is the next point, Hugo. Um, and this is the definition. You take a proper called Macaulay relative curve, you take a relative positive super divisor, and then a, a Ramon Ramon supercurve alone set. And we say that F is a Ramon Ramon supercurve alone set if there is an, an epimorphism as before, and, and then same as before, but putting the relative dualizing sieve in the place of the dualize, of the Berosinian. That is the same definition, but uh, you can do that because as you have 
put that uh, morphism is called Macaulay, then you have a line bundle omega f, which, uh, which is, uh, plays the role of the relative bearer signal. Go, go, go. go. So the reducible components are typically called the Ramon Ramon puncher, and you typically you typically want that uh, all those uh, components do not intersect each other, uh, and that uh, the, the the set is the is the union of them, the, the the joint union of them. That means that the morphism is not ramified in the smooth locus. Go ahead. Well, go to a stable supercurves. First, stable curves. An ordinary prestable curve is a proper connective curve whose singularities are simple nodes. A prestable and a pointed curve is a pair, where well, it is a prestable curve, and this is a family of n different points. Then there is a notion, a notion of a stability of n pointed curves that can be given in several ways. Uh, one of them is to say that the preservers, uh, the stability it happens when the line bundle om omega is of this aim pole, or when X, the, the couple, the pair XD has a finite number of automorphism, for example. So we use that to define the uh, stability of supercurves. Please, Hugo. Then a stable, I will, is, is still in the, in the ordinary case. Uh, uh, no, sorry. Therefore, Susie Cave. A stable, a prestable Susie Cave of arithmetic genealogy with punctures over a super scheme is a proper called Macaulay relative supercurves together with a collection of disjoint uh, closed sub super schemes taking values in the smooth locus such that the projection is an isomorphism for every one. They can call any sponsor. They mean that on every fiber, you are taking any NS, N, N, S family of different points. A collection of the joint Cartier divisors of relative degree one. There will be the Ramon Ramon Potter. They are the pointers on every fiber. And as before, an epimorphism between the relative differential and the relative dualizing shift twisted satisfying the conditions I described before. Then the pair induced on every bosonic fiber. Then other condition is that the pair induced on every bosonic fiber has to be a stable curve of arithmetic energy in the ordinary sense. So, this is the definition of a stable supercurve. It's a supercurve with the punctures, uh, every, uh, with the punctures of, of uh, Neveus Vaz, Enes, and Ramon Ramon, Eres, such that the ordinary fibers are stable uh, or stable uh, point of curves. Again, Hugo. Then you can prove that uh, there is a proper smooth super stack representing the phantom of a stable supercurve of arithmetic energy with NS punctures and Ramon Ramon. But so there is a theory uh, of moduli of those objects that's in the ordinary case. And in the ordinary case, um, there is a proper and smooth, uh, the Lin Manford stack representing stable supercurves. And in this case, there is a proper and smooth, the Lin Manford super stack, the theory of super stack, were developed by Codoni and Viviani, uh, representing the factor of a stable supercurves. So we have moduli objects for that. Hugo. Then we move forward to define not only stable supercurves, but stable supermaps. Then we take a target the super scheme, a target super variety, we, we assume to be proper and smooth. And we fix a class of rational equivalents of supercycles of dimension one, even dimension one. Then we are mimicking the definition of a stable map. Then a stable supermap into this target variety, epsilon over a super scheme, is a prestable uh, uh, sushi curve with pointers 
uh, of both types, and a superscale morphism from this X to the target variety Y, mapping every fiber into the cycle beta we have previously fixed. Then if for every geometric point, we take a component of the normalization of, of the bosonic fiber, which is contracted to a single point, then what happens is the, uh, if this component is rational, it has contained at least three points from the, from the punctures. And second, Hugo, I don't know if the word second appears, if the, if the component has genus one, uh, it has contained at least one of these points. That's in the ordinary condition of stability for, uh, for supermaps. Then again, have Then we have to make sense of all of this, and then we put this in to, to prove that they have some kind of moduli space of proper, uh, of uh, sorry, of um, stable supermaps. Of stable supermaps, we take as above a proper smooth super scheme, and we define uh, with this called a uh, category fiber in group points, CFG. This is a category with a target morphism into the category of a scheme. Uh, and then this category is given the object at supermaps as before, taking value in beta. The morphisms are Cartesian diagrams and the projection P is the one which associated any uh, stable supermap to the base super scheme S. Go, Hugo. This is quite quite abstract, quite terrible, but also in the, in the ordinary case, not only in the super capes. Go ahead, we define the, the, the fiber and group. Uh, and, and then the question is that this uh, CFG, this uh, CFG is happens to be a super stack. In other words, that there is a moduli super stacks of superstable maps, taking values into a fixed um, proper smooth super skin plus a class, a, a cycle class beta of uh, or, uh, even demand dimension one. Then, last part, Hugo, go ahead, is that the Nori geometric category basic combinatorial object in this theory are categories of diagrams. Go ahead, Hugo, the whole transparency because every object is a graph, a family strata, there are boundary maps, uh, there are uh, vertices, there are edges, and so on and so forth. We are not, so, we are not going into detail on that. And to uh, each category, we can associate one graph with vertices at the other and the flag at the morphisms uh, on all the objects of C. We are, not, we are not going to follow this approach, but I put this transparent to provide you with more information. Go ahead. Well, ahead again. Then we need to choose a geometric category of super skin, super tax, whatever, um, and though with a class of close embeddings, and complements of close embedding satisfying certain relations. That's in order to have a cohomology with supports in a close, cohomology with supports in an open, et cetera, et cetera. So kind of a, a categorical cohomology theory. For us, roughly this category has to be the category of, uh, of stable supermaps. Now, if you want to go to a more detailed definition, we have two possibilities. Go ahead, boom, boom, boom. Uh, in the in the same the objects at the same of the objects of this super category that is, is stable supermaps, the morphisms we do have two target varieties proper smooth and two classes. Then a morphism is a morphism between two stable uh, supermaps 
mapping uh, compatible with all the choices. The morphism is a couple, well, this is a morphism of, of, of super of point to the sushi curves, and C, uh, C is a morphism of the target manifolds, and these morphisms have to be compatible with the, with the cohomology class. Then we can also define stable supermar over different base super schemes in the same way. Go ahead. And the second possibility is that we start with a stable uh, super curves, a super curve morphism in the target variety. Um, and we don't impose the condition that the fibers go by feet to the to the to the, to the class B. And we define that that sub super scheme of the base scheme S is be good, beta, beta good. If the restriction of the super curve to that super scheme uh, is a stable super map mapping the fibers to the class beta. Then we can consider the category of be good super schemes. And this is a direct category with the property that you have two inclusion of two super schemes. Uh, and the composition is both coincide, then everything is compatible with that. Then in, in the type one, whenever uh, we have two stable supermaps, a morphism between them is called an ori closed embedding of type one. If the involved morphisms, all of the involved morphisms on the base of the super curves on the uh, of the superchairs themselves and on the target varieties are close immersions of super scheme. In, in this case, whenever we have a close embedding of a stable supermath, this uh, implies a bound on the number of pointers, the number of pointers of the of the smaller, let's say, of the the f has to be smaller than one of the f prime. Moreover, for every geometric point of the base, the fiber over that point is uh, isomorphically mapped to a subcurve consisting of some of its irreducible components. So it's part of the, the fibers of the first are part of the fibers of the second. Go ahead. In type two, we find a super skin, a stable super curves, as above, a super skin morphism. And, and a class, and then an ori closed super scheme embedding of type two is simply a closed embedding of what we have called beta good super scheme. That means super schemes such that the fibers are mapped to beta. Go ahead. Then, Susi nori diagrams in the type one is a category. With some structure, well, we have in our graph. We have vertices. Vertices are pair, where the first part is a morphism of stable supermaps, and the second is an integral number. Then, given two of those vertices, a pair of uh, and a pair of closed embeddings, commuting, this has to produce an edge of the f f prime. E to the G, G prime E. Uh, compare, uh, it, it, you could have in, in, in mind the case where, where F prime and G prime are varieties, X and Y, F and G are close sub varieties, and, uh, and this pair F, F prime E would be the relative cohomology of order I, H, I of, uh, of the variety relative to the closed subvariety. And then in cohomology, we have those vortices. And then for every change of closed embedding, you have to have an edge pacing to the, uh, to the um, vertices uh, with index i to the vertices with index i plus one, like in cohomology, going to the h i to the h a plus one, when you have a, a chain of closed embeddings of varieties. Go ahead. Oh, well, in this case, in something similar. I don't think it, there is a point to, 
to give to the details. So it's it's kind of of the same thing. We can we can go ahead. So the next step will be to have a representation of this category of of effective nori diagrams into an appropriate category. This could be category of modules uh, of a commutative ring, of a super ring, uh, which we don't have by the time being. Assuming that such representatives were given, one could define that the category of effective mixed sushi motifs uh, is the category of diagrams of this category of graphs into this category T. Go. And then we can construct an example, an example when we have a prestable curve as above and a super skin morphism in a target variety with a class given a vertex that means two close sufi embedding not be good super skin. We have an inclusion of the of the super curves over them. And then we have an subsequent civilian groups. This is the, the ordinary cohomology cohomology of uh, relative to the to the open uh, x over s1 minus x over s2 this is topological this is topological and then uh, we can uh, associate to the vertex one abelian group which is the hypercomology of the direct image of, of this kernel e, e i admirable of, of theta over v12 the hypercomology. This is kind of a relative hypercomology with respect to the close to the close sub scheme x s one inside x x two. This will induce the representation the representation we were looking for. There is much work to be done in that direction. Hugo, and that's it. Thank you for your attention. I know it has been quite quite technical, but I would like to give you an an idea of this of this theory, right? we think that that's a very promising uh, geometrical theory of motifs. We can be described for given out of um, out of the theory of super stable maps. I must to say that uh, uh, all definitions, almost all definitions. Uh, we, we has been necessary to arrive to this point are completely new. The definition, the definition of super cycles uh, and the right definition of a stable super curve and the right definition of a stable super maps, besides all the technicalities and also all the definition of how to construct nori commutative diagrams out of stable super maps. And that's it. Thank you very much. And uh, uh, Claudio. Let me say to you congratulations on, on that occasion and uh, te mando un grande abrazo. Thank you, Daniel. Thank you very much. Thank you. <clears throat> Are there questions for Daniel? Uh, Daniela, I have a question, well, uh, a curiosity, which is uh, marginal uh, with respect to the topic of your uh, interesting talk. Um, so now uh, we know uh, a lot about uh, SUSE curves, and I'm wondering about the derived category of a SUSE curve, uh, especially in the no smooth case, um, as a first step, for example, in some super version of uh, homological mirror symmetry. So my, my question is very simple. In the case of the super projective space, uh, very first step, uh, is there any version, super version of the uh, celebrated uh, Balinson theorem? So are we able to describe the derived category of super projective space as the, the, represent, the, the category representation of a certain quiver? I don't know. We are, it is something that I more or less propose, not exactly that, but something quite related, proposed in Salamanca in our super seminar. And it's one of the, of the things I think is one quest. It, it will be important to, to think about. 
How, how, how all those derived categories in the projective space are made, mean, uh, whether they have or, or, or not a sessional collection, where, uh, collections, whether they are not yes, generated this, this in one kind of way question. or the other, and, and, and if this, uh, and if the Bellison theorem, as you say, is true or not. Now, who's working on that? Who's working on uh, that? Nobody yet, but uh, I think no. the, the so Fernando we, we, Sancho and that you could be, could be very uh, We can talk about that. I think yeah. that uh, uh, now that we have a very, say, uh, stable, if we can use this, this word, very stable and uh, solid theory about Susan Curves, I think that uh, we should be uh, able also to, to, to answer this, this question, at least in the particular case of the super space. Okay. The, the super projective space. Sorry. Super projective space, yeah, I understood. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Any more questions? Thank you, Daniel. Okay, okay. No, no more questions. So I think uh, we may close. Thanks again, Daniel. Thank you very much. Thank you. So uh, have, a, uh, have a good beer also for me. <laughs> yeah. <laughs>